and let's welcome this true worship process. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together one more time. Let's celebrate Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We are still raising the sound. Amen. We are still raising the sound. We have not recovered from Shofar Extra. Hallelujah. Same atmosphere, same power, same energy, same spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, begin to praise the name of your God this evening, this morning. Pardon me. Begin to praise the name of your God. Just lift up your voice unto the Lord one more time with all your heart. With other faith in your hearts, just lift up the name of your God. Forever you will be our God. We have come back to say thank you, Lord. We will not forget what you have done for us. We will not forget who you are to us. We continue to lift up our voices unto you. We continue to raise a sound as one body. You are the God of our salvation. We give you all our praise. The goodness in our lives comes from you. You are the source of everything that is good, everything that is light, everything that edifies. We thank you for making these things available unto us. Thank you, Jesus, for that love. Thank you, Lord, for picking us up and establishing each and every one of us. We bless your name, O oh God, for everything. You are everything to me. You are everything to me. There is no me without you. Oh, Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let heaven hear your halal. Dodo, let the sound of your tehila reach the doorstep of heaven. Let it go beyond. Let it reach the throne room of the Lord. All praises and honor and glory and riches to the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. So you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, we've come back to say, you get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, take all of the honor. Come back to say thank you. Thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. Take all of the honor. We all come back to say thank you. You get the glory. The praise, you get the praise, you come back to say thank you, thank you, you get the glory, you get the glory, you get the praise.
your God. Halal the Lord. Give him your Toda. Give him your Zamar. Give him your Shabbat. You have shown that you are on our side. You have shown that you are good to us, Jesus. Of this we are sure that the goodness and the mercies of the Lord last forever. In all seasons, hey, in every season you are good. Hey. In every season you sit upon the throne. So I am safe. So I am serving you. Hey, what I can't say is thank you. What I can't say 
is thank you. What I can sing is thank you. My money is not enough. Hey. So I give you my life. I give you my heart. Lord, I'll come back to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
worship you this is our pledge as long as we are breathing we will always worship
I came before us, gave it to you. You still deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. We stand here and say, You deserve it. You deserve it. You are the Lord, you deserve it. Lift your voice unto Him. He deserves it. You got me, so you deserve it. You deserve it. Creator of the universe, you deserve it. Oh, you deserve it. My lift eye, you deserve it. My strength, you deserve it. You are my beginning, you deserve it. And you are my end, you deserve it. My future is in your hands, you deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. For the wonderful things you're going to do, you deserve it. For the things you have done, you deserve it. And as I live, the things you are doing, you deserve. You deserve. Everything is in your hands. You deserve. You deserve it. So we sing, Blessed be the Lord who reigns forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, oh, blessed be the Lord who reigns forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. As He reigns forevermore, we'll praise Him forevermore. Hey, blessed be the forever, hey, who reigns forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hey. hallelujah. This will be our song forever. So why not start now? Blessed be the Lord.
Let the worship and the praise of the Lord be superimposed over everything as the waters cover the earth. Let your glory fill the earth. Hey, hey. Sing hallelujah. One more time. Blessed be the Lord. Ha! your courts. Blessed be my God, the one who saved me, the one who raised me, the one who loves me. Continue to worship, hallelujah. I want to continue to praise the name of the Lord today. It's just about raising a sound, amen. So let's continue, let's do this. My very able, my joy, Priscilla is here. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us believe that last weekend was a glorious and powerful service? How many of us believe that? So this morning, we are here to yes. thank God. And most importantly, we want to tell God that even as we raise the sound, may his life be glorified in our lives, that wherever we go, people will see the glory of God. Amen. So this morning, we are raising our praises. We are asking God to fill our lives, that wherever we step foot, people will see that the glory of God is upon our lives. Amen. Stop. 
set me on fire. Thank him for the gift of life. Today you are alive. 
because he gave you life thank him for this day you have seen it's a gift there are people this morning who slept yesterday and plan all the planning that today they will be up they will do that they will do that but ladies and gentlemen the truth is that they woke up to this this morning they tried to wake up and they couldn't wake up but you and me god has given us life thank him don't take it for granted thank him thank you for the gift of this life you have given to me for me to see today 24th of march is a gift and i want to thank you i bless you somebody bless him honor him praise his holy name he is god almighty he deserves it unto him be praise unto him be glory unto him be honor unto him be adoration thank him that you are strong that you are not sick you are not in the hospital you are not lying on the hospital bed others are there not a fault of their own but they are there today you are up you are here you are strong thank him with your life the bible says let everything that has breath praise the name of the lord you have breath this morning can you thank him i want you to learn to thank him i want to hear everybody thanking him and praising him and honoring him because you are alive because he has given you life because he has given you the gift of the day we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you jehovah almighty we thank you lord we thank you Tap your hands and thank you. Sing this song and thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. up your hands say we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you jehovah almighty we thank you lord we thank you we thank you indeed for the life you have given to us this morning we acknowledge that there are people who slept yesterday night with all the good plans that they were today but unfortunately they could not wake up but for us you have been gracious you have been merciful you have given us life we thank you lord we bless you for the strength, for the energy, for the gift of today that we have seen. It's not everybody who will see today, but we have seen it. We say thank you. We bless you. We honor you. With our lives, we want to say, Lord, be glorified, be honored. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, come on, shout an amen. Put your hands together. Welcome somebody. Come on. Turn to somebody. Welcome somebody. Welcome some people that have come. Amen. Oh, just say something. Don't just stretch your hands. Say something. My sister, you are welcome. My brother, you are welcome. Don't just stretch your hands. 
Say something. Some of you are just stretching your hands. But you are not saying anything. Learn to add something to what you are saying. What you are doing. Add a saying to what you are doing. We give God praise. We honor God for every one of you. Can I hear you shout a big amen? Shall we be seated? Amen. You look glorious. You look beautiful. You look handsome. And we thank God for every one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Last, last week I didn't watch you guys because the time you were doing it, that was the time we were also going to church. So I didn't watch you guys. But I heard the testimonies of how great a meeting you had. And we just want to thank God for every one of you. We thank God for the life of uh, Pastor Aquile and the leadership. If you don't appreciate it, I will, I will take her away from this service. I will take her away from this service for, from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Be seated. Amen. You have no idea that some people elsewhere will be wanting to put her to come to their church and come and handle their youth. But you are blessed to have her. So honor her and appreciate her every time. Amen. Well, we thank God for today, 24th of March. You are alive and I'm alive. And we give all the glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, um, uh, we will be the, 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 we are having our uh, Bethesda which is our Easter program on, on from tomorrow to Sunday and some of us will be in Bolga but Sunday we will definitely have to send a pastor here and uh, all of you will have to come we will have one service on Sunday that is uh, the fire service so all of you come and I'm going to send one pastor the pastor I'm thinking of sending is pastor Aquile who will come back and come and I haven't I haven't spoken to her yet but she will come and handle the service uh, I don't know what her plans are but uh, that is my plan but we just want all of you to try also and follow online I know we have interruption in the internet, but somehow, sometimes you can get a bit. Try and follow. We have morning sessions, and then we have evening sessions. So try and follow, and then I'm sure your life will be blessed. Uh, we all have to be on the same page. So try your best and follow. Amen? And uh, on Sunday... We'll have one service, just as I said, 9 o'clock. All of us will be here. And uh, a pastor will be here with some of the leadership to bless us. Amen. But today, I want to bring you a word that I... You know, when I was traveling, I made a roster of preaching, especially for the uh, fire assembly. And we're dealing with commitment, uh, contentment, sorry. Contentment. Contentment means being in a state of being satisfied. Being in a state of being satisfied. Or your mind is at ease. Now, contentment in the Bible does not mean you have everything. So the Bible says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, uh, when you read First Timothy chapter 6, the verse 6. Godliness with what? Contentment is great gain. That means when you are a godly person and you are at ease with yourself and you are, you are in a state of satisfied, you are satisfied with it, it is a gain. It is not a loss. It will add many things to you. When we say somebody has gained something, that means he has added something to himself. So when you are godly and you are not content, your godliness doesn't add anything to you. You lose. 
But when you are godly and you are content, your godliness adds something to your life. And I pray that will be your portion this morning. That you will learn to be godly and content. Not godly without being what? Content. There are people who are saved, but they are not content. So many things are going on wrong in their life. When you are saved, when you are godly and you are not you are saved and you are you are not content, many things go. So we've been dealing with the contentment. But today I'm going to talk about contentment, eternal life in Christ Jesus. Contentment, eternal life in Christ Jesus. That means contentment dash eternal life in Christ Jesus. In other words, what I'm saying is that one of the areas you should be very content about is your eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen? Not money. Not food you can eat. Not a wife. Not a husband. They are all things that you can gain when you are content with your eternal life. God will add them. Amen? So, eternal life is a life God must give you. Amen? So that you can live in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal life in Christ Jesus. Contentment. And I want us to read from John chapter 17, the verse 1 to 5. John 17, 1 to 5. John 17 to 5. Shall we stand for the reading of the scriptures? Give me the new King James. All right. Listen, this is, this is, this John chapter 17 is what we call Jesus' prayer. Okay? Jesus is what? Now, you know, people normally say that our Lord's prayer is our Father who art in heaven. No, that's not the Lord's prayer. That one, the Lord was teaching us how to pray. But if you want to know how Jesus prayed himself, John chapter 17, and I don't want you to forget it. So if you want to see Jesus' prayer, go to where? John chapter 17. After he was finishing his work, he now prayed, and we are going to see some few things here. I may touch on some few things here, I will not touch because I want you to understand some things. He says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven. He lifted up his eyes to where? Some people say there is no heaven. That heaven is not here or not there. I don't know where they tried to create all that. But he lifted up his eyes onto heaven. Whether he looked up or he looked side or he looked there, there is a heaven somewhere he lifted up his eyes onto. You know, some people try to make doctrine over every small little thing. Heaven is nowhere. There is heaven somewhere. <laughs> Somebody asked me, where is heaven? Is it here or here? There is heaven somewhere. We normally will lift up our eyes up because we believe that God is up. But it doesn't matter. Wherever you are looking, it means God is somewhere. Say God is somewhere. So he lifted up his eyes into on, to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. He was about to go to the cross. So he said, the hour has what? The hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Now, going to die is not an easy thing. So, he says, the hour has come. Who did he pray to? Who did he pray to? So, you believe there's a father. You know, there's another doctrine some people teach. They say there's no God, any father anywhere. Jesus was the one who became the father, and he became the son, and he became the Holy Spirit. It's wrong doctrine. If it was so, why was he praying to the father? There is a father somewhere. They want to dispute the fact that we have three persons in one God. We don't have three gods, but we have three persons in one God. Just like you standing here, you are spirit, soul, and body. The only problem with you because you are a human being is that you cannot separate yourself. But as for God, he can decide to separate himself. <laughs> He's God. He can do that. So, that is the difference. But he prayed to the one. That means there's a father somewhere. Tell someone there's a father somewhere. You can call upon him. Don't let anybody tell you that there's no father anywhere. 
You know, some people tell us that because Jesus is here now, we don't need a father anyway. Jesus is here. We need a father. Jesus himself needed a father. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may also what? Glorify you. Okay, two. As you have given him, I want you to take note of this. As you have given him what? Authority over all flesh, that he should give what? He should give what? He should give what? I want you to talk. Some of you have closed your mouth and you are looking at me. Can't you see it? He should give what? Eternal life. He should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. Three. And this is eternal life. That they may what? Know him. Know you. I beg your pardon. That they may know you. Who is he talking about? The Father. That they may know you, the Father. Jesus is the one talking to you. That this is the eternal life. That you will know the Father. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So he is praying. He's saying, this is the eternal life I'm going to give your people. That they will know you, the Father, and know me, Jesus, whom you have sent. But I like the qualification he put on, 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 on God, the Father. He said, God, to, to know you, the Father, we know that you here refers to the Father. And the only true God. That is also to tell you that there are some people who have their gods, but they are not true. We know that our God is the true God. So there's no confusion. Said somebody, there's no confusion. Listen, if somebody tells you we are serving the same God, some people from different religions tell you we are serving the same. It's not true. It's never true. Jesus said, "You are the only true God, and that nobody can know you but through me, Jesus Christ." So even if you say we are serving the same God, and I believe that I should go through Jesus, and you believe you should go through another person, you are not right. We cannot be on the same level. We cannot be on the same plane. Are you clear with that? Are, are, you, are you okay with that? So Jesus is saying that you have given me the power, the authority to give them eternal life. And this is the eternal life. That they will know you, the Father, the only true God. That means it's not the same as uh, at some gods. And to know me, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That means it is not possible to know God the Father without Jesus Christ. This is where we say we are not serving the same God. Tell someone we are not serving the same God. Anybody who wants to know the true God should pass through who? Jesus Christ. Simple. Come on, put your hands together. If you understand this one, what I'm going to tell you today is simple. So never get confused. Some of you get easily confused. When they come, some people come and tell you we are serving the same God. Say, eh, yes, it's true. We are serving the same. We are not serving the same God. There is a true God and there's a false God. The true God, you can go to Him through who? Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. Because God has given only Jesus Christ the authority to give eternal life to anybody on earth. Without Him, you can't have eternal life. Now, if you don't have eternal life, you can't go to heaven. Eternal life is the life in heaven. We start it from here and we go. I'll show you some other scriptures. Now, let's go to four. So, I'll read the four and five and then we'll go. I have glorified you on the earth. So, Jesus said, Father, when I came, I preached, I've glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me. And now, oh, Father, glorify me together with you, yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So, the glory I had with you, Jesus was with the Father. Then he left the glory and came down and became man. Now he has finished his work. He said, glorify me with the glory I had with you, which made us one. I Now make it me soon, and I'm coming. That means all the stench of humanity will be left, will be taken out of him so that he can become God. That's why we say Jesus is God. Three persons in one God. I was with you. We were one. But I came down. So now I finished the work. 
glorify me back and let me come back that's why when they put him in the grave he shook himself and came back so we sing the song even death could not hold him captive even death the glory came and he got up shall we be seated so you have seen that so all the things i want you to know is that you don't have to get confused when we are dealing, talking about eternal life one of the greatest or the greatest thing you and every human being needs on earth is eternal life say eternal life come on shout eternal life listen it's not money it's not a house it's not a car it's not a wife it's not a husband Amen. there are people when they don't get husbands they, they start panicking and cursing god have I said all these years and he has not given me a husband if he has given you eternal life it's enough when you are godly with contentment you will have to gain but if you are not sometimes your gain delays amen so we have to understand as Christians what is the most important thing in our lives our eternal life because you see how long will you live on earth Watch our wedding fear saying. If I ask you how long do you want to live, some of you say, I want to live one sixty years. One sixty years, you'll be walking like no, you yourself will know where you are. Two hundred years. You are troubling your sons. You will trouble your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. You are going to be a burden. Why do you want to live two hundred years? You want to be a burden to your grandchildren so they'll be around me and be picking you. What kind of suffering do you want to give them? Hmm? <laughs> but the fact, what I'm trying to say is that <clears throat> no matter how long God gives you life to live on earth, you will never live here forever. Is that okay? But there is a place we are going to live forever. That is heaven. Oh, if you are clapping, clap. I saw somebody trying to clap. Listen. No, listen. No matter how blessed you are on earth, with all the cars and the houses and everything, one day you will leave them and go naked. And the only thing that will help you is if you have eternal life which Jesus brought. If you don't have it, what are you going to do? Heaven and hell are real. So, eternal life is the, is the most important gift God gave to mankind. So, if you are on earth and you don't find Jesus to get eternal life, your life is miserable because the day you die, you will see that you have wasted your time here on earth. Hallelujah. So eternal life is very important. For me as a Christian, one of the things I value most in my life is my eternal salvation which I got in Christ. The eternal life God has given to me. God may give me many other things, but they are not as important as that. And I want you to understand, that is the most important thing. So God sent him Jesus Christ on earth and gave him power that he will give eternal life to men, to human beings. And he now says, this is the eternal life I'm giving to human beings. That the human beings will know you, God the Father, and know me, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That is, means that you cannot have eternal life without Jesus Christ. Is that okay? Tell somebody you can't have eternal life without Jesus Christ. And if you want to know the Father, it's through Jesus. Um, one day, one of his disciples said, Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. Then one of the disciples said, Ah, show us the Father. Then we will be okay. The Father is the one we are all looking for. Show us the Father, then we'll be okay. Then Jesus said, Ah, Thomas, I've been with you all these years, and you, you can't see the Father. He said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. 
Because he and the Father are one. So he said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. So in other words, if you have Jesus, you will know God the Father. All right. Let me show you. And go with me to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And let me pick it from the 9 to 13. Watch this. Look at this scripture also. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. How many of you know sometimes you want the witness of men? Sometimes in life. You want people to witness that you are so-so and so. Is that not true? Or when you are applying for something, they say referees, you go and you bring it, say, oh, I think if pastor endorses this my form, then we endorse. Sometimes whilst we as human beings are endorsing it, we are endorsing because we know you physically, but we don't know you spiritually. We don't know the extent to which. In other words, I assume, first of all, that this man is a Christian. So I expect that his life is this and this. And so I trust that that's what he is, Sam. But he can choose to go there and go and show a different character. And go and steal. Or do something evil. So the witness of men is good. But the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God. Now get the witness of God. <clears throat> which he has testified of his son. God himself has given a witness of Jesus. It's not men who are telling us. God himself has a witness of Jesus. The verse 10. He who believes in the son of God has, has the witness in himself. So when you believe in Jesus, you don't need anybody to tell you something because you can see the witness in yourself. The Bible says the spirit of God witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. You don't need to prove. When you are really born again, you don't have a problem. Somebody coming to show you who Jesus is. No, no, no. You feel it inside. You know. Amen. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given us. Now let me, let me let you know this. There are people who say we are serving the same God. But they don't believe in Jesus. The Bible says they are making God a liar. Because the testimony God has given is that Jesus is my son. Through him you will know me. It's like if you go to Barnabas and say, Barnabas, I want to, I want to get to daddy. And Barnabas tells you, okay let me lead you to mommy and you don't believe Barnabas you are messing up because Barnabas can lead you to me because he's my son so if you don't believe him you are messing up you see some people want to say that they believe in God but they don't believe in Jesus they are messing up this is the witness God is saying he is the only son through whom you will know me so you are now understanding that we are not serving the same Anybody who does not believe in Jesus Christ as the way to God is not serving the same God with you. Don't fool yourself. Don't allow people to, 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 <laughs> to say something to you and you are confused. Some of you easily get confused. We respect everybody. I respect you and your religion. I'll give you the respect as a human being. I won't insult you. I won't say anything. But we are not serving the same God. Because you don't believe in Jesus the way to God. If you believe that, put your hands together. So, he says, he who, does, he who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given us his son. If you don't believe in that testimony, you are already a, God already has a problem with you. God the Father has a problem with you. So they say, me, I'm, no, no, no. Now, look at verse 11. Now, watch this. Look at 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us what? Eternal life. Eternal life. And this life is what? This life is what? This life is what? So if you want eternal life, where do you go? To the Son. And who is the Son? Jesus. This is the testimony. This is the record. 
God has given us what? Eternal life. And this life is in his son, Jesus. Now look at the verse 12. He who has the son has what? Life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the eternal life. If you don't have Jesus, you can't have eternal life. And if you don't have eternal life, there's no way you will go to heaven. Is that okay? Is that alright? I can give you many scriptures in John the, John's gospel. But this is enough. Just to let you know. Don't get confused. There are people who are serving other religions. We too, we are serving God. Everybody has the choice to serve who he wants. My parents, some of my parents were pagans. They chose to serve pagan. Paganism served their ancestors until they died. When they go, they will know whether their ancestors are alive or they are dead. Me too, I chose to save, to serve God the Father through Christ. Some of my relations are Muslims. My main uncle in town, one who is my uncle, I can refer everybody to that. This is my uncle. He's a Muslim. He's an allergic. I go to him every day. We sit down, we chat. We don't argue about things. He should serve what he believes. Occasionally something happens and we sit down, we're talking and say, Uncle, me, I've been telling you, you have to change. You have to move to my side. You say, oh, go away. How can I move to my son's side? My son should move to me and we will talk. We end it there. We respect each other. We don't fight. But we are not serving the same God. Because through Christ, I am serving the Father. He too, through whatever, he's serving whoever he's serving. Are you understanding me? So that means we don't all have eternal life. I have eternal life through the Son. And if I die, I'm going to heaven with my eternal life. If you also die and you have no eternal life, you know where you go. We can't go to the same place. Are you okay with that? So just get this. Now, I want you to see something in verse 13. I, I like verse 13. Verse 13. If you don't know anything at all, know this. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may what? You may what? Oh, I want you to talk to you. You may what? Everybody open your mouth and say, you may. Have you seen it? Let's read it together. Go. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may eternal life so god is saying you have to know that you have eternal life we call this assurance of your salvation you know it look i'm not in doubt i am born again i'm going to heaven i have eternal life nobody can convince me i know it so when somebody asks me where are you when you die where are you going you know because you have eternal life you can say that I'm going to heaven. And you are sure about it. I'm writing this to you so that you will know that you have eternal life. Those of you who believe in Jesus Christ and have given your life to him, you have to know that you have eternal life. Don't get confused. Some people say, nobody knows until we get there. And God is going to weigh our good deeds and our bad deeds. No, 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 there's nothing like that. The knowledge of Christ gives you eternal life and eternal life is the passport is the license is the visa that takes you to heaven if you don't have it you don't have it eternal life is the passport is the visa that takes you to heaven so you have to know you have to know it if you don't know it it means you are not born again Anybody who doubts whether he will go to heaven, something is wrong with you. Question mark. Boom. Something is wrong. Because the Bible is saying that I'm writing this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you can be sure of where you are going after death. You can be sure. You can be sure. And it should not be confused at all. Amen? Hallelujah. So you, may you know that you are going to heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, this, so that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe 
in the name of God. And that you will what? Now, this is very important to me. That you will continue to believe. It means some people are there, sometimes they forget to believe. They forget. They believed yesterday, today they don't believe. So their life is like this. Today they believe they are a child of God. Tomorrow they don't believe. That's not, a, that's not the life of a Christian. A Christian must believe God. Believe that Jesus is your Savior and continue to believe. Continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Continue to believe in the Jesus Christ. One day when I was in the university, after I'd been born again for about four years, I went to the university and I met my Siphon mates who were also the one were in Siphon and were in the same scripture union. Two of them. During these four years, I don't know where they went. And some people went and preached some doctrine and they accepted the doctrine. And then they came and saw me. We met at the university. So they were coming to convince me so that I would join them. They came, opened the Bible, pram, 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 pram. And they are very skillful. They know what they are telling you. Open to there, open to here, open to here. But they want you to see what you see. This is where if you don't know the scriptures, people can take you off your feet. So you may not continue to believe. Open here, open here, open here, open here. Then they would. Then when they get to some places, which I don't know, I say, but why are you interpreting this like this? They say, because this, 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 this. I say, give me another scripture in the Bible. At least one or two. That say what you are saying. They can't find it. Because that one I don't know. So I tell them, why are you saying this is this? He said, because of this, this. I say, okay, give me another scripture in the Bible that says this is that. They cannot. But I say, no, no. You can't look at the scripture and tell me it says this. And I'll believe you when you cannot back it with another scripture. So I won't accept it. Though I don't know it. I've not looked at it that way. But if you cannot back it with one or two more scriptures to tell me that that's what it means, I won't buy your thing. So we went back and forth. Finally, they realized, kai, 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 kai. I was not ready to bear. Because the ones I knew, when they mentioned, I said, how about this? For example, somebody told me that Jesus, that uh, the Father, now the Father is not the Jesus. I said, ah, ah. So Jesus was praying to who? So when Jesus was on earth, the father was nowhere. Who was he praying to? And then the person started and said, Somebody also made mention. I'll talk about some few things. But I want you to see something which I want to emphasize. When you have eternal life, it doesn't mean you have finished. When you have eternal life, it does not mean what? You have the passport. You have the visa. That is the simple way I can let you know what eternal life is. Eternal life is your passport, is your visa. Okay? Or you can even say it's your ticket. You have the ticket to go. But if you have traveled before, you know that you can have a ticket and a, lunch, a, a passport. And you can get to the airport and something is wrong. If you don't know, you go and ask, where is, where is, where is Eric? Look at Eric sitting there. Eric, get up. Eric works at he, he works at the airport. Go and ask him. The number of people who have the visa, they have the passport, they have the ticket, who got there? And Eric and go went and job them like this. And carry them away. That is because there are regulations of every nation. When you are going to America, they will tell you some things. When you are going to enter a plane, there are some things you don't carry. You don't carry. They will tell you, you have the visa, you have the license, you have the picture, you have the ticket, everything. But they will tell you, this should not be in your luggage. Especially your hand luggage. If it is there, they will hold you. You won't go. So, the fact that you have eternal life does not mean you can live your life anyhow. You can't live your life anyhow. So let me show you what Paul said. 
in Philippians chapter 3. Let me use just that one, then I'll end it there. Because we don't have much time. Philippians chapter 3. Let me pick it from the verse 1. But I won't read the verse 2. And I'll jump to 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For to write the same things to you is not tedious. But for you, it is safe. Verse 3. For we who are the circumcision, who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. He's referring to people who have given their life to Christ as people who have circumcised in the spirit. Their hearts have been circumcised. As against the Jude, Judaism, who they have to do proper human flesh circumcision. He said, we who are in Christ, we don't need a human flesh circumcision. It's not the one that qualifies us. The one that qualifies us is the circumcision in the spirit. Where we worship God in the spirit. And we do not rejoice, we do not have confidence in the flesh. Alright, move it. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh. Now, Paul was addressing something. There were certain Jews who were insisting that if you are born again, if you have eternal life, you must go and physically circumcise yourself if you are a man. And Paul said, no, it's not necessary. Because now our circumcision is not in the flesh. It's in the spirit. And we worship God in spirit and in truth. Then he said, if anybody thinks about that circumcision, I, Paul, should be first because I'm a, I'm a Pharisee. Circumcised on the eighth day. I, Paul, was circumcised on the eighth day. So I will not tell people not to circumcise because I myself was circumcised. But I'm telling you not to, not to do so because it is not what will take you to heaven. That's what he's saying. Of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Move it. But what things were gained to me these I have counted loss. For what? That means what Paul is saying is that there were certain works we used to do. And we thought that the works were the ones that would take us to God. So people say, you know, when you go to heaven, the way or no, it's not there. Paul said, we used to do that. But when I found Christ, those things I thought were gain. They, I count them now by what? Loss. That means you, God will not depend on your good works to let you enter heaven listen to that or to save you let me put it where god will not depend on your good works to save you salvation is not because of what you have done it is the grace of god move move and let me see something then he said yet indeed i also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of christ so the knowing christ is the most important thing now and when you know christ you have eternal life all right now, move to the verse 10, 12, which I want to show you something. But I said, after all these things, not that I have already attained. So when we have eternal life, it doesn't mean we are already perfect. Say, I'm not perfect. Now, some old translations is not that I am perfect. It's also there. You see it. Not that I've already attained or I am what? perfected but i what i press on tell somebody i press on now let me now talk to you that's where i want to stay when you have eternal life it doesn't mean you are perfect what you need to do is to do what say press on say press on say press on now that is very important a lot of people after they have been saved they don't press on so paul is saying as for me I am pressing on that I may lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold on me. What Christ brought, I want to press on until I lay hold on it. You see, the, the ticket is to lead me to United States. I am still in Ghana. So I'm pressing on until that ticket takes me to where? United States. 
so i am pressing on onto that eternal life takes me to what? heaven listen to me this earth you have to press on there are temptations there's the devil who doesn't want you to make it there is circumstances that will put pressure on you so you are a christian you want to live well but there's no money all of a sudden things are hot and then all of a sudden you see some money lying somewhere you have to press on you must press on so in life we have eternal life and we know we are going to heaven but we still have to do what we still have to do what we still have to do what press on there are some Christians who are not pressing on at all every small thing they are out then they will come back but you must press on until that visa that passport takes you lay hold see he said i press on that i may lay hold i may have finally that for which christ purchased for me so christ has purchased something for us but we must press on until we get it that's why we say in life you have to press on now let me simplify this and we pray because time you see we are saved by grace how many of you know we are saved by grace and as for grace you don't add anything to it when you want to be saved grace saved you free of charge what did you do to be saved did you buy it it was expensive gift, but you got it free of charge so we are saved by grace but when we are saved by grace we must keep pressing on so that the grace will take us to where we must go keep pressing on in other words i am set free of charge by god but i have a responsibility say i have a responsibility i'm not working i cannot work for my salvation but after i've been set free i must work myself towards heaven so that's why the bible says in philippians chapter 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 2 the verse the verse 12 eh? it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling now when he says that it doesn't mean you have to pay for the salvation no you can't pay for it you've got the salvation free but keep it well if i bought a precious thing for you and you don't keep it well you are saying that thing is not precious work it out keep it amen my wife and i wore ourselves gold gold rings but quite expensive I won't tell you how much. My gold ring is expensive. We, we, we got it. But you know, this gold there, eh, if you don't learn to clean it, it will, be, it will not be shining like gold. So we work at it. Occasionally, my wife will sit there and say, give me your ring, and I'll give it to her. She has some, some, some materials to use. Then she will clean them and make them nice. Even her necklace, she has to learn to clean it. Otherwise, it's wet. In Africa, when you wear this, it's wet. Sweat changes the color. Amen? Especially if you are using co copper, eh? or using copper or copper. Mm. It, it will change. It's a nice thing when you get it. But you must work to keep it. So my wife will take it and clean it. And when I wear it, I say, wow. The thing is shining and reflecting. I say, wow. Anything that is precious, you must learn to work to keep it. So the Bible says, work out your own word salvation with what fear and trembling be afraid that you the, 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 the fear here doesn't mean you should be afraid that's what i want to say but with reverence reverence if i give you a white shirt and i say this white shirt is good for you and i bought it for you fine the first day you wore it and came to church, I looked and I said, oh, I'm happy, this guy. The next time you bring the white shirt, when I see it brown, I'll tell myself, what kind of human being is this? I gave you a white shirt. How can you treat the white shirt and let it become brown? It means you don't know how to work out and keep things. So we we'll keep our salvation by working it out until we can lay hold on that which Christ has laid hold for us. 
How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Now, let me say this and then pray. I really wanted to teach you this so that you don't get confused. Um, in life, where are you? Up there. The way you are in darkness, I can't see you. Or is it a glass that makes you look dark like that? I think it's the glass, eh? So I want something done. If it's done, give me a sign. Where's your man? Is he there? Has he told you what to do? All right. Now listen to me. There are some. <laughs> Can you feel it? Can you sense it? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel it? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. I can feel it. I can sense it. The King of Glory is here.
are surrounded. Look at your neighbor and say, We are surrounded. We saw great a cloud of witnesses cheering us on, cheering us on. We saw great a cloud of witnesses cheering us on, cheering us on. You are not alone. The spirit of Abel is here. You are not alone. The spirit of Enoch is here. Every McPherson has seen the heart. Friends, and uh, if you if you had any pledge, but first of all, if you have your tithe, can you come and put your tithe on the altar? Just walk out quickly, quickly. We don't have much time. Quickly, put your your tithe on the altar. Quickly, put your tithe on the altar. Quick, put your tithe on the altar. If you brought in any any pledge to pledge, bring it and put it on the altar. Bring it and put it on the altar. Any pledge you have, bring it and put it on the altar. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let's stand everybody with your offering. Let's stand everybody with your offering. Lift it up. I want you to say a word of prayer. Lord, this is my offering. I sanctify it before you. Bless it for me. Somebody pray. Say something about your offering. Thank you, Lord, for these offerings of your people. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, come from the back and put your you offering. You were the word at the beginning, one with God alone most high. Oh, yes, can you let them come? Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of What Jesus. a wonderful name What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. That could not hold you, the fields all being full. You silence the voice of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory, for you are raised. You have no equal now and forever, God. You Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the 
by that word. What do we say to our daddy? Daddy, God bless you. I want you to lift up your voice, stand to your feet. You want to pray for Pastor Clement. He's our father in this house. Look, let me tell you that this teaching, these are the foundations of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are things that we must hear over and over again. And he said, I write these things to you so that you will know. And he is reminding us today so that we will know. Tell somebody so that you will know. Hallelujah. You want to pray for our father. You want to say, Father, continue to preserve daddy's life, mommy's life. Let your word always be strong. Let your truth be spoken out of this vessel in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray for his preservation. Pray that God's word in his mouth will always be light to those who are in darkness. In the name of Jesus. Pray that that which you continue to speak over us in this church will cause everybody in this house to be a strong pillar of faith in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you. We ask that your blessing will be upon our shepherd in this house, Pastor Clement and Prophetess. We ask, oh God, that you continue to strengthen them. Continue to, Lord, let your word in their mouth be light, oh God, to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together again. Please be seated. Uh, you, you know, sometimes in the main chair like this, we, we, because we, are, we don't do memory verse. But I think for today, dear, we must have a memory verse. Oh, Musa, we must have a memory verse. So we take First John again, chapter five, the verse thirteen. Eh? So we must have a memory verse at Chepa. I think we must bring it back into the Shofar Assembly. Eh, so this week we are all going to learn this. Let's say it together. These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Say it to yourself every day. Know it. Let this be printed upon your heart. Amen. Is that a good thing? And to me share on next week, now me bisawa. Don't be looking elsewhere. Amen. All right. So Daddy has already said this week is Bethesda. Let's join online from tomorrow. So let's let the messages and the reminders be going around. And I think I'd like to see people sharing. You know, let's share on our page, on our status, it's what we are learning from Bethesda. If we don't hear anything from you, it means you are not following the service. All right, so let's do that. Shall we stand to our feet even as we share the grace? Next week is a joint service, 9 o'clock. Let's be here even as we celebrate the power of resurrection in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We want to powerfully say our declaration together. Let me hear you boldly. Ready? Go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.